Hi, it's me again, Mr. Z. There is little Mr. Z there. Because I, as I said, I don't put my head under this thing because all you can see is wrinkles and bald spots. And so you can have little Mr. Z to introduce it. We are going to work on today something called oil crayon resist. One uses watercolor also. Basically what one wants to do is perhaps establish some areas with oil crayon and then you can brush other colors over it. Now for our critter here, I think that what we'll probably do is the spots. And this critter is a the famous vicious leopard seal, the number two predator in Antarctica. They weigh about a thousand pounds and they eat pretty much anything they want, penguins. Their only natural enemy is the killer whale, but they're so vicious with their vicious teeth that they've been known to back up into the ice underwater with their back to the ice and lash out at the killer whale so the killer whales say, this ain't gonna work for me. And then the killer whales move on. Well, if I can find my pencil here, and I have it right here, I said I had it. Here it is. I want you to take a look at what we have here. Basically, and I want to make sure I'm in the picture, you have really a very, very large rectangle. The face is centered way above it because the face is being filmed from below. We know that if you film an animal from below, or often we film villains in movies from below, then they look bigger and nastier. This photographer was in the water. He was absolutely must have had nerves of ice because they are really vicious critters and they've been known to kill people. I'm really just gonna draw that huge, huge rectangle. That's it, a massive rectangle. How, again, we've measured, how long is it? Let's measure here. And put it against the rectangle. Oh my goodness, it's a little bit longer. I'm gonna put this next to his shoulder. And it almost class, let's try it this way. I think you can see that from the shoulder to the back fins, it's about the same size. Well, that's great. Then I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put it where the shoulder was and I'm gonna make a little mark. And roughly that's where my leopard seal ends. Um, they were called leopard seals because of their spots, not because they're vicious like leopards can be. Now, look at this area. It is almost, really, how many, how big is it? Just the top that shows most of it, let's see. It's that big. How many more do we have to the bottom? That's one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So right about here would be a pretty good place to, and then ready, two, two, three, four. So I'm gonna bring it down a little bit. Okay, very good. Now, the way this angle is, is the animal is rounded up here and then the mouth curves back. The mouth curves back. The nose is way up here. And coming into that curve and looking rather sinister is an eye way up here. It almost looks like a turtle. There's some nostrils here. This comes up a little bit and many, many, many whiskers. Now, that rolls down, comes out a little bit, rolls underneath, and we can send it back to the tail. This rolls down here to show the shape of the jaw, that marvelous shoulder. Let's see how far back the flipper is. The flipper is here, 
the head's this wide, let's put it by the shoulder, and it looks like the top of the flipper is the same width as the head. So here we go, the head, there's the shoulder. So the start of the flipper would be right about there. Okay, let's go back to work. This rolls off and goes right down to the flipper. The flipper goes way down, guys, way down. This is much lower here and it rounds off. And I don't know what these look like. They look like those thingies that you find on shrimp or something. Hey, I like that. You know, and how big are they? Well, they're not that big because they're way away from the camera. They are not even as wide as the head. So let's see how I did. Yep, not quite as wide as the head. Very good. Now the other flipper almost touches this flipper and it's located here. And you can see we have a lot of lights and darks. We have a lot of strength in this animal. And that looks very nice there. Okay, so what I'm gonna do next is start to use my pen, as we do. And I'm going to start seeing what I can do about that eye. A little bit of white in the eye gives it a little bit of a highlight. Mm. That comes right up there and comes down here. That's gorgeous. Handsome jaw. Down to the flipper. Bad. We have these nice little whiskers. You gotta have whiskers on a seal. Seals are all whiskers. If you were to bring that down a little bit, it would look a little bit more sinister. And the animals are really quite, quite vicious. So, uh, very good. Let's see what we can do with the tail here. That rolls out nicely like a loaf of bread or something. That comes here and you see these little goodies. Very, 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 very nice. I think I'm happy. Okay, now we talked about oil crayon resist. I think my darkest color is probably my blue. I could use a black, I could use a green. I think this purple is a pretty good dark color. And so I'm gonna use this purple for the spots. Remember, wherever I put a spot, if I get it rich enough, the watercolor won't stick. Therefore, we call it watercolor resist. Now, I, as you can see, I'm also following the flow of the animal so we can get a de definition of the animal. We can define the shape not only by the black pen lines, but by the way the spots are flowing. This is very dark here, but I'm gonna probably put some black paint over it to make it even darker. Okay, now that's oil crayon. That's how I define some of my darker areas. Okay, very good. Now, we have a horizon line where the land meets the sky. You couldn't put a horizon line right here, class. That's a no-no. The animal does not end where the land meets the sky, that is called bad composition. Since he's on this ice flow, let's establish that. And maybe he's sticking out of the ice flow a little bit there, okay? Now we don't, what we wanna do is we don't wanna really interrupt the animal. So I think putting something here would be okay. As long as it doesn't get in the animal's way or the lines conflict with the animal. Seems like we have a little bit of sky here. Now, we have a, a little bit of dark for the animal spots. Let's see what we can do with some more, maybe some shadow. Even if you don't see a shadow, you can put a shadow in there. Um, <clears throat> it's balance time. If you remember, we always balance our colors. So why not put a little bit of the purple on the ice in the background, maybe a little bit in the sky. 
maybe this blue would make it more interesting in the sky. Maybe we need to balance the blue a little bit and add it over the spot. I think you're seeing that balance is very, very, very important. Okay, now the animal has a lot of volume. He's rather thick down here. You can see some shadow on him. He's obviously got a shadow under his chin. So I'm gonna mix up a nice blue and see what I can do with some of these shadows. I'm gonna mix it right here. I hope you can see it. I think that's blue. If it's not, it should be. That's a nice purple at least. It's even better purple now. Okay, I guess the animal's gonna be purple. Now, we've talked about this before. You can certainly add some color and then soften it. Now, this animal has some nice darks up here. So I think I'm gonna put them in. I'm gonna put those darks in there. There's just a couple up there. And then, this is under the chin, so there would be some darks here. Okay? I seem to see that he would have dark. And you've noticed that the animal that wherever we have oil crayon on our friend's spots, it doesn't make much difference because it goes right over it. Okay, now we're ready for that famous technique of adding a little bit of water to soften it. See what happens. That's lighter there. I can always go back and add some more color. Let's put some water here and see what happens. Wow, it's not bad. Very good, but always remember to leave some white. Now, we have a problem. This isn't reading dark enough. Let's put a little bit of black in here and see what we can do about getting it a little darker. But I'm still leaving that white class. And since we have a nice strong dark, let's have another. These are very dark. Let's give them the darkness that they want. And where else can we add some of that black? Maybe a couple of spots. Okay. Okay, now we have our animal. He's lounging around, thinking of which photographer he's going to eat next. Let's put a little bit in the background here. Now, <clears throat> We know that we can soften this black with a little bit of water. See where it goes. That's called the happy accident. Maybe it goes where you want it to go and maybe it doesn't. Uh, if it doesn't, you can always, as I talked about before, use a tiny bit of a little Kleenex or squish out your brush and you can use it like a sponge. Okay, so we have some interesting highlights of white. We have some strong shadows. Now, what color is across the color wheel from uh, from blue or purple. I'm checking to see if we're still here. Okay, so across from blue or purple, across from blue is orange, and across from purple is yellow. I'm not sure those colors will work that well, so why don't we maybe try a, a color that's called an analogous or a neighbor color? That would be like a green. And a green would be a neighbor of of your blue. So there's the neighbor color right there. We probably will add the complement, but we'll add that later. So I'm also noting that the C is a little bit darker here than it is there. So again, remember that if I put this next to the purple, it may bleed. So I'm going to put some green in. We're defining the figure now. What we're trying to do is make sure that everybody knows that number one here is the number two. Number one is the number two predator in Antarctica. It's called a leopard seal. So let me put some water here and soften it. Let me soften a little bit here. There. That reads as a nice green ocean, okay? But you can't forget that we need a little balance. There's a lot of green over here. How about a little green in the corner? You guys might say, well, Mr. Z, 
That's, that's the ice flow. It's not the animal. No. Yes, I know that. But what I'm trying to do is balance the color so my project is nice and even. Now, that looks really good, but since we have a little bit of green, I'm going to see what I can do about adding a tiny bit to the animal and just to keep it fresh and interesting. Okay, next. Oh, I like him so far. Okay, now in the sky again, we can see what we can do. Yes, I think that we could possibly have the orange that's across from the blue. So why don't we try that? I'm going to mix up a nice orange here. I'm going to have to take away a little bit of this. Goodbye. Okay, let's see what I can do with orange. Really, really, really rich. We always mix our color. Sometimes we have to use pure color. If you don't have a clean brush, you're going to run into deep, deep trouble. Do you wish to run into deep trouble? Now, that's really rich. I often have a little piece of paper towel to try it on, okay? Now, since we said we wanted some orange, because, and the reason that we used orange was because it was across the color wheel. Red's across from green, orange is across from blue. I have kind of a red orange. So why don't I see what I can do again with some of this beautiful color, and it will not stick anywhere near. Now, I'm gonna go a little bit easier on the color around his head because I want to emphasize his head because he's got such a noble head. So why don't I just soften it a little bit around the head? Kind of call attention to it. But let's not call too much attention. Let's have a little bit there. Okay, now we have the orange. Now we have to balance. Again, you would see some orange in the water. Let's see what happens. Ah, it should be okay. It should smear around a little bit. Maybe a little bit here. Maybe that's too harsh. Let's soften it. And we need to balance again. We have our beautiful whites. We have our blacks. What do we need? We have some baby blue here. Oh, it seems to me like maybe a little more baby blue would be more interesting here to balance the blue. And I'm seeing that blue in the water a little bit. Okay, now. Last of all, let's see, is there anything that we're missing on the leopard seal? I like what it's doing, and because of that, uh, I can't see much else I could do. You know, I do really like to add a little bit of a color that you wouldn't expect to be there to make it fresh. So I'm mixing up a little bit of yellow, just a little bit, and I'm going to try to make it fresh adding some color just because. Not too many, because if you add too many, it's going to be too much. Okay, now, the last thing we need is a Z2020. Here we have a oil crayon resist watercolor of the great leopard seal. Goodbye.